So here we're going to be looking at bearings and triangles, trying to put the two bits together. So again, remember you've got 180 degrees inside a triangle, you've got all your parallel line rules, just to remind you of those real quick. Inside of a U, that's co-int, equal 180. If we did a Z angle here, we've got alt, equal, and if we did an F angle here, we've got corresponding, and those are also equal. You'll have to draw on your own north lines from time to time, and remember that all north lines will be parallel lines. And remember, you can use Pythagoras, sine, cosine, tangent, etc. So you can use your Sokotoa, your trig, and your Pythagoras, but only if you have a right angle triangle. So let's take a look at this first one. Find the bearing of B from A. So remember, it's important to remember out where you're starting here. So I don't start at B because I want to go of B. I look at the word here and I find out which one am I going from. Where am I actually at to begin with? From A. So I'm going to start at A and draw on a north line. And now I need to, to go from A, pointing north, like a little robot, turn clockwise. How far do I turn until I'm pointing in the direction of B? That's the bearing that I'm looking for. So I've been given some information here. I notice that I do have a right angle triangle. I've got 40 degrees, 90 degrees, something I don't know. And potentially if I knew what this was, I could then use angles on a straight line. So I'm going to use the uh, 180 degrees in a triangle. So 180 minus 90 minus 40 gives me 50 degrees. So I know that angle up there will be 50 degrees. And that's angle triangle equal 180. Now I also have angles on a straight line. So 180 minus 50 gives me 130. Angle on straight line equal 180. And that's my bearing. The bearing is 130 degrees. So again, using angles in a triangle, and then having your north there, you get angles on a straight line. So that wasn't too bad. Again, just draw on the north, and be really careful to pay attention about where you're coming from. That's where you're going to start every time. Let's look at the next example. Um, I'm guessing we want to find the bearing from x to y. Oh, no, sorry, it's giving us that information. So. The bearing from x to y is 707 degrees. So what does that mean? If I come down here from x, x is here, so I'm going to point myself north. So the bearing from x to y, so from that pointing north, turning until I look at y, is 70 degrees, or 07, but I'm just going to write in the 70 degrees. And they want me to find the bearing of x from y. So what we're actually looking for here is this one over here, from y, draw on my north, turning like I only can clockwise from the outside all the way around until I'm pointing back at x. That's the bearing we're looking for. So we're not sure exactly what it is, but let's think about what we can use. So. I've got two north lines drawn on here, so automatically I'm going to think, can I use any parallel line rules here? And if you notice, that is a U-shape in there, so I do have co-interior angles. So I know that this angle up here is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus 70, because co-interior angles, the U-shape there, add up to 180, so I get 110 degrees. So this is 110 inside, and if you notice, if I start north at y and turn around to x, and then continue on for the 110, I've done the full 360 angles at a point. So to figure out what this bearing part is out here, I'm going to use angles at a point. So I'm going to say, put the reasoning here, sorry, co-int equal 180. And then for my next one, I'm going to say 360 minus 110 is equal to 250. And my reasoning for that is angle at point equal 360. So my bearing 
from x to y, or of x from y, it doesn't matter which way they write it, is going to be 250. So of x from y equals 250 degrees. And they've asked us to find a second part here as well. Find the bearing from y to z. So again, it's not always about which which um, point is given to you first, it's about which one they tell you you're specifically coming from. So from y to z, where's that going to be? So from y, I'm going to go to y and draw on my north, which is already there. And then I need to go around until I'm pointing at z. So you'll notice it's slightly smaller than the last one where we went all the way around to point at x. And I think we can still use angles at a point to figure this out, but we don't have quite enough information. Like we had the 110 that matched up perfectly with the bearing from y to x, but here we're missing that little piece, this one in here. So if we knew what this was, we would have all the angles around a point. And conveniently we can figure that out because angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if we go 180 minus 90 minus 65, We get our 25 degrees, so I know it's 25 degrees in that corner of the triangle. So now my angles at a point are the 25, the 110, and the bearing from y to z. So angle in triangle equal 180 for my reasoning. And my last step here would be 360 minus 110 minus 25. It's going to be equal to 225 degrees. So that's my bearing. Again, from y to z, starting at y and turning around until I'm pointing at z. So again, on these problems, um, if you need to, you can use Pythagoras and Trig and stuff like that. We didn't in either of these examples, but sometimes that comes up. Remember, all your north lines will make parallel lines, and you can use your co-interior alt or corresponding angles. And still, watch out for angles in a point and angles in a triangle or angles on a straight line. All of those rules will still apply for us. So give a go at some of those problems that follow on.